Well, it's the 7th of October and the 7th film in my 31 Horrors of Mike is the 1973 classic Don't Look Now. This is a film which I will definitely be doing a really in-depth review and analysis of because it's one of those films that changes the more you watch it. It's got so many layers to it. Thematically, it's just so dense and it's just it's an absolute masterpiece. It was directed by Nicholas Roeg, who had also did films like uh, Walkabout and The Man Who Fell to Earth. Um, it stars Julie Christie and Donald Sutherland as a couple who have recently lost their, their young daughter uh, through an accident. They then move to Venice, where Donald Sutherland's character, John, uh, is, is commissioned to start restoring an old church um, as a sort of architect. While they're there, his wife Laura becomes obsessed with two women that are uh, staying nearby, uh, and one of which claims to be a psychic and claims to be in touch with the ghost of their dead daughter. The film is about grief, it's about dealing with loss, and it's about dealing with the greatest loss that anyone can ever have, which is the loss of a child. So it's full of emotion. Now, a film that just explores that grief in, in of itself would be interesting, but Don't Look Now um, it explores much more than that. It's a film where nothing is what it seems. Um, I, I very much can see parallels between this film and The Tenant. I think the difference between this film and The Tenant is that The Tenant, uh, a film which I will talk about, um, is... A little bit more difficult to understand. What's great about Don't Look Now is there's a moment of epiphany, there's a moment where everything makes sense and it's right at the end of the film. Now I have to stress here, when I first watched Don't Look Now, I thought it was nonsense as I was watching it. I was like, this this director's making what's he he's just making stuff up, you know, this makes no sense. There's no narrative structure to it. At that time I needed narrative structure. I'm a little bit different in my tastes now, but um, and then all of a sudden I got like hit in the face with a sledgehammer not literally but by the film uh, at the end of the film and the conclusion because everything made sense the film um, chops and changes things to mess with the perception of the audience so you, you are confused but trust me there's a killer payoff and um, it's just fantastic at the same time that the um, this couple are living in Venice and trying to get over the grief of their daughter and carve out a new life for themselves. There's a lot of uh, tension in the, the, the city of Venice itself where um, there's reports of a killer being on the loose and uh, also just the fact that John, played by Donald Sutherland, is a sceptic and his wife isn't really, she really wants to believe that the spirit of her daughter is contacting her and, and it causes a real uh, a real great dynamic between you know this couple trying to stay together through their grief. It was controversial for the time because there was a there's a sex scene in the middle of the film between Julie Christie and Donald Sutherland and it was controversial because it is well for the time it was very explicit but also because rumours abounded that it was a real sex scene that they actually just had sex and the director just filmed it, you know, like there was no direction, it was just like have at it, have at it guys, rolling, and um, so uh, that that had caused a bit of controversy, uh, controversy at the time, like I say, it's so dense, it's got uh, so much to it, so many layers, it's beautifully shot, um, if you've ever been to Venice, I've been to Venice and um, when, I, when I used to go backpacking and, and Venice is just it's a, a one off place it is incredible but it does have that sort of creepy feeling because a lot of it, although Venice is actually quite small there's a lot of it as you walk through these really narrow passages over bridges going over canals and it feels as if a lot of Venice is abandoned and some of it is um, and there's that decay going on and it's almost as if uh Donald Sutherland's character is trying to he's trying to renovate this church that's decaying in Venice, which is a place that's, you know, sinking into the ground basically, and 
he's also trying to you know maintain his own life and and um, try to to bring life back to 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 his existence and to his family. I, I love the way this film deals with skepticism. I'm quite a skeptic myself with a lot of things, and uh, I think you know this film is a little bit of a warning to people who become too skeptical and don't become open minded because you will not heed the signs hence the title of the film so it's just an absolute masterpiece I would definitely check it out it's not going to be for everyone if you really like a linear uh, if you like a, a, a real solid structure to your film then you might not enjoy it um, as much but really stick with it even if you're watching and you're like what's going on trust me it all makes sense it's not one of these films where you feel it's not a Dario Argento film where you're just kind of like that was beautiful but what was it about you know like this film um, the meanings are there I think and I think they're deliberately put there it's phenomenal so go and check it out that's Don't Look Now from 1973 and tomorrow will be the 8th day almost a third in to the 31 Horrors of Mike really loving all the feedback that I've been getting off of everybody it's been great and uh, keep it coming I'll see you all later bye bye